If you're organizing a golf tournament, you can use this Excel workbook to select tee off times, choose players for that time, and then see those names in your schedule. This is Deborah Dalgleish from Contextures.com. You can download this free workbook from my website and there's a link below the video. When you open the file, there's a summary sheet and on that page you can enter a tournament date and the number of players that you're going to be scheduling times for. So I'll put in June 1st and I'm going to have 52 players. And there are formulas in these gray cells, but we'll look at those later. Next thing to do is go to the players list. You can click here or click the sheet tab at the bottom. There's a tee off times drop down and there are placeholder names in here. I've just filled in player one, two and so on down the list. And the other main sheet is the tee off times. And as we assign players to the times, they'll be filled in here. I'm back on the player list sheet now and I'm going to copy a list of player names that I have in a notepad file and just paste them in here. If you don't have a list, you can type directly into these cells to replace the names. I'll go to my notepad file. I've got the names selected. I'll right click and copy. Then going back to Excel, I'll click here on the home tab, paste. So now I'm ready to assign these players to make it easier to find people, I'm going to sort the list. I'll click on any name, go to data, and sort alphabetically. The next step is to make sure that the tee off times in the workbook match the tee off times that you're going to use. So click here to go to the tee off times sheet. And I've got times in this column starting at 8 and then every 10 minutes after that ending at 10. So you might need to type different times in here. Just make sure that you only use each time once because the macro is going to be looking for a unique starting time. So if you've got duplicates, things won't work correctly. And then we'll go back to the player list. The two main setup steps are done now. We've got player names and we've checked the tee off times and perhaps edited that list. Now you're going to assign these players to those tee off times. To do that, select this cell, click the drop down arrow and you'll see all the times that are still available. So I'll select 8 a.m. And then to choose players for that time, all you have to do is click in this column, the mark column, and type an X. It doesn't matter if it's upper or lower case. You're going to select four people. If you try and select a fifth one, when you press enter, you'll see an error message warning you that you can only select four. So I'll cancel that. And to put them into the schedule, click book times. And to see what happened, I'll go back to tee off times. And there are the four names ready to go at eight o'clock. And the number has disappeared from this cell because we've used that time and these numbers are numbering what's going to be in our drop down list. So when I go back to player list now and go to select another time, 8 a.m. isn't on the list anymore. Maybe I'll do the 850 time and you'll notice that those cells have changed to white I see a Y telling me they're booked and which time they're booked for. So I'm going to select another four people and click book times. And when I look at this list, 850 is gone because that time has been filled. So you continue down your list, set tee off times for all your players, and then you go to your tee off time sheet and you'd be able to print that list off as a reference. And then you could also print this player list so people have an alphabetical reference where they can find their name and tee off time. You can use this golf tee off time workbook without knowing what's happening in the background. But if you're interested, I'll show you a little bit about how it's set up. This cell is data validation, which creates an in cell drop down. And to set that up on the data tab, you click data validation. And in here, it shows that I've selected to allow a list. And it's based on a range 
called time list. To see where that is, I can go to the formulas tab, click name manager, and time list is here and it is a dynamic formula that starts on the admin times sheet, which is over here, starting in cell C2, and then it finds the end cell in the time calc column, looking at the maximum number there. If I click here, it goes to that sheet. We're on the admin times sheet. This is the time calc column, and it's only selecting cells that have something in them. So that's down to row 11, if I close this, and if I go to the tee-off times, 11 is the highest number on this sheet. So it's finding the maximum number here, and using that many rows over here, and that creates the numbers for our drop-down list. In here, we've got formulas. This checks this name using COUNTIF in times booked. This range of cells where all the names are. So all it's doing is seeing if that's in there. If it is, show a yes in this column. Otherwise, there's nothing. So it's a quick way for us to see if something's been booked. And over here, there's a very long, complicated formula that goes through that time booked range again, finds that name, and then looks at the time column to return the booked time. This button runs a macro. So to see which macro it runs, right click, assign macro. And we've got two macros in here, and this one is running the macro called player times. And if we go to tee off times, there's another button there which runs the clear times macro. So we can see it here, and it just clears all the names out of this range of cells. On this sheet, there's one column with formulas, and it's using count A to check the player columns. And if it finds something there, it returns an empty string. Otherwise, it takes the highest number above it and adds one. So here we're getting a five because the highest number above it is a four. And there's another sheet with times, admin times, these numbers are just typed in here, and then there's a formula in the time count column. It checks to see if this time ID is greater than the maximum count on the other sheet, which is 11. And if it is, it just shows an empty string here, like these last two. Otherwise, it's going to go back to this time sheet, look in this column, find the matching number, and then return the time for that number. And these cells just count the times on these two sheets just to make sure we have the same number. And if not, it will warn you that you have to add more numbers here. And then there's another sheet that has information that the macro needs. So you don't have to do anything here. It's just getting names and putting them horizontally so that we can put them onto the tee off time sheet. The final formulas are on the summary sheet where you've entered two bits of information, and then formulas just count the players in your list of players, how many tee off times you have, and how many you need based on your players divided by four. And this column tells you what's left for you to add. So you've booked eight players of your 52, and you still have 44 to go. And this is that admin time sheet, just to make sure everything is up to date there so that your macros will work correctly. When you want to start over, you can click clear bookings and start booking names for a new tournament. Thanks for watching this video. You can go to my website, contextures.com, to get this workbook. And please subscribe to my Contextures YouTube channel so you can see the latest videos as I post them.